Hi, my name is Ben Gross. I'm in the School of Human Services and Social Sciences, and I'm in the political science program here at Jacksonville State University. And I'm late to make a judicial decree. I'm, I'm struggling to come up with the final verdict. Do you mind if I talk through the case with you to see if we can come up with what my verdict should be? Great. You're, you're a captive audience that you can either play along with this or visit another web page without me ever knowing. So I'll assume the former over the latter. Here are the basics of the case. On the one hand, there's Pat. He's a fairly large guy. I don't mean that he's overweight or anything. It's just that at six foot eight, you wouldn't miss him in a crowd. And on the other hand, there's Barry. He's a relatively small guy. At five foot four, he's one that can easily get lost in a ball pit. I know, nothing really interesting here. Nature has made Pat and Barry to be in different shapes. But here's where things get sticky. Pat and Barry were both at a party last week. At the end of the night, they went to get their coats. Now, Pat and Barry are both a bit thrifty, as college life demands. Luckily for them, they both found winter coats for only $20 at their local bargain stores. The only issue is Pat could only find a medium coat, and Barry could only find a men's extra large jacket. When leaving the party, Barry found that Pat's jacket was a better fit for him. Seeing that the coats were worth the same, Barry took Pat's jacket and left his jacket for Pat. It just so happens that Barry's coat is a good fit for Pat too. Presto! You would think all is well. Barry now has a coat that fits him and Pat is the owner of a jacket that corresponds to his body size. The only problem is, Pat's not happy with the outcome. He didn't buy Barry's jacket. While Barry's coat fits Pat better, Pat demands that each owner get their original jacket, as this is what the law requires, a respect for private property. Do you see the pickle that I find myself in? How am I to decide the case? Barry is arguing that each man should get the coat that best fits him. Pat is arguing the law regarding private property needs to be upheld for both men. What should I do? I know, this seems like a silly question, but this silly question actually has massive implications for the rest of my life as a judge. Do you see it? Do you see how my choice in this case will influence the rest of my life? I'm about to make a decision that will either show coherently and consistently my idea and principle of justice, or I'm about to make a choice to show that I've never thought seriously about this important element of humanity at all. On the one hand, I can side with Barry, and this is completely reasonable. I mean, Pat's coat is very little for him. It only covers part of Pat's torso, he has limited mobility, and he's unable to zip the thing shut. I mean, he's jumping around the whole apartment when he tries to put the thing on. It just looks silly. And it's not like Barry's coat is doing much good. It's so large, he has to put a belt around the jacket to keep it on. His arms never make it out of the sleeves. And it's always getting dirty from being so close to the ground. Yes, Barry is wrong to switch the coats without consulting Pat. But the switch now gives both men coats that actually fit them. Barry and Pat are better off given this switch, as they now have jackets that fit. On the other hand, I could side with Pat. And this is completely reasonable too. Each man used their resources to buy their own coat. No one forced them to buy that coat. They could have gone to another store, waited for a new shipment, or they could have even traded coats on their own terms. Each coat is the property of their owner, and each owner has control of his property. Only consent of both parties can change ownership. So what do you think? For whom should I judge in favor for? Should I rule that Barry is correct, 
and matching the coats that are most fitting for each man? Or should I rule that Pat is correct, that the law protects the private property of each individual? Before you answer that question, there are some implications we should consider. For example, Barry's argument rests on the principle that what is good is what is fitting for one's nature. But how do we know what is fitting? What if Barry meets another man, Anthony? Anthony is similar in Barry's size, but has just a bit different proportions. What if Pat's coat fits Anthony better than it fits Barry? And what if Anthony's coat fits Barry better than Pat's coat? Must Barry switch coats again because we have found another coat swap that is more fitting? When will this cycle stop? When will we know that we no longer have achieved the good fit, but the best fit? How can we know when we've reached the best fitting jacket? Furthermore, what principle are we using to determine what is the best fit? Do I worry about the sleeve length, the sleeve seam, the collar notch, the jacket front, or more? Can I look at just one component? Or do I need to know all the components of the jacket and how they fit a human to determine if it is the best fitting jacket? This is a lot of work. Perhaps it's best if I focus on Pat's solution. Maybe this solution won't be so complicated. I mean, it's clear, right? The law is the law. If you own something, you own it. It doesn't matter if the item fits you or not. It doesn't matter if you have a purpose for the item or it just sits on the shelf. It doesn't matter if you let the item sit on the shelf or if someone could do something good with it. It is your property and you are free to do with it what you want. Now I know, you're probably been watching this presentation and you're asking yourself, I thought this dude was gonna talk about political science. He hasn't talked once about elections, political parties, interstate wars, civil wars, legislation, court decisions, international trade, bureaucratic decision-making, identity politics, equality, liberty, human rights, democratization, media, or anything else I would consider political. Instead, he's been going on about some stupid coats this whole time. What a waste of my time. Well, I hear you loud and clear, except I haven't been talking just about coats for the last few minutes. I've been talking about the very core idea of what political science studies. What is the good society? Or, to state it more specifically, tensions exist within political life between the opinion of what is good and knowledge of what is good. How we come to gain knowledge of the good society is the proper domain of the field of political science. You see, the code situation is just a way for us to examine the topic without arousing our passions, opinions, and ideals. It is asking us to consider who we would give the coat to. And it seems innocent enough. But this thought experiment allows you to truly share your opinion concerning the matter. Now, we can examine that opinion on this question. We can examine what this opinion means of the good and the just within political life. For if we agree with Barry, if we think justice is what is fitting, then we come to a number of conclusions that seem good. If a person does something bad, then society will punish them. And if a person does something good, then society will reward them. 
But how do we determine what good is? Is overcoming economic scarcity good? It would seem that producing enough food for the world so no one is starving is a good thing. But what if, to achieve this, we need to take away land from those that are not making it productive enough? This may sound far-fetched, but this is an argument that has been used by courts before to justify the transference of land to those willing to make the land productive from those holding the land in an unproductive state. It may be one thing to swap coats, but are we willing to swap territorial claims in the name of the good over the lawful? At the same point, how could you easily agree with Pat? Sure, his solution allows the preservation of territorial lands due to the agreement of law. But it also means that agreements we have made through the law must be kept even if they violate what is good. Does this mean that slavery in the United States could never be eradicated except through an unpressured democratic mean? Does this mean that Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation was an unjustified use of executive order? But who could ever justify slavery as an ill-fitting coat that we must keep because each state made its choice on the matter, which requires the other states to respect their decisions? Aren't there some standards of good that we share and that must supersede law? But how do we know what these ideas of good are that all humans share, which can automatically supersede any law that we have? While Lincoln argued for decades that slavery was wrong, he also argued the only way he could remove it was through a democratic process. Otherwise, democracy would be destroyed in the United States and replaced by a new type of domestic tyranny. Yet when confronted between obeying contradictory laws, a human law as compared to a divine law, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. argued we must choose the latter over the former. Divine law may conform with the good, but if divine law is allowed to supersede human law, what happens if your divine and my creator have different teachings? Then what divine law should supersede the other divine law? All these problems from an issue of an ill-fitting coat. I'm not here today to give you an answer on how to resolve the tension between what is lawful and what is good. I'm not here today to provide you a solution to the problem of can the good life of the individual be the same as the good life of the community? I'm not here to offer resolution between the noble and the good or to even argue if justice is a good thing or a noble thing. I'm only here today to alert you to these problems. The political problems we experience in our lives, from civil wars to trade wars, from debates between favoring equality or favoring liberty, from arguments about what is the best policy to preserve life, trace back to this code story. These are the problems of political life. This is why we require a political science, a scientific examination of our opinions on justice, the good life, nobility, equality, fairness, liberty, and more if we have any hope of living in a coherent society. This is why we require a political science to help us better understand our own desires, ideals, and frustration with our society. As without reason guiding our investigation, we are doomed to make a poor decision about what coat to give to each person.